Welcome biologists. Today we are looking at the Krebs cycle, which is specification point C, taken from the OCR specification for A-level biology, part of respiration 5.2.2. So the Krebs cycle involves quite a lot of new terminology and new products here that you've probably never met before, but we are still coming across these terms of decarbolate decarboxylation and dehydrogenation that we have met before and also substrate level phosphorylation if you do want to look back at previous videos and remind yourself of where you've met them before so e the krebs cycle we're up to this part now of respiration we've looked at glycolysis we've looked at the link reaction in aerobic respiration we're now on the krebs cycle of aerobic respiration so the Krebs cycle, again, this occurs within the matrix of the mitochondria. Again, this occurs twice per one molecule of glucose because as we looked at in the previous video here, I have two acetyl coenzyme A that I produce in the link reaction per one molecule of glucose. So this reaction, this cycle is going to occur twice per one molecule of glucose. So my acetyl coenzyme A comes along and it brings with it my acetate from the link reaction. This acetate binds to oxaloacetate to form citrate. Now, my coenzyme A goes back to the link reaction to pick up more acetate to bring to the Krebs cycle. But for now, we're going to follow what's going on here. So my citrate, which is a six carbon compound, um, has one carbon removed for, from it. Therefore, my citrate has been decarboxylated to produce carbon dioxide. My citrate is also having a hydrogen and an electron removed. Therefore, it's been dehydrogenized or dehydrogenation has occurred to form my reduced NAD. This forms a five carbon compound. Don't need to know what that one's called for our specification, which is good news. Now, my five carbon compound turns into oxaloacetate through these various different things that are occurring here. I've got carbon dioxide, which again is removed. So therefore, my five carbon compound has been decarboxylated. I've got a hydrogen that's going to be removed and added onto my NAD to form reduced NAD. Therefore, my five carbon compound has undergone dehydrogenation. I've got ATP that's being formed here and being made through substrate level phosphorylation. Again, substrate level phosphorylation is where ATP is made without the use of a membrane and a, developing a concentration gradient across a membrane. And you'll meet this when we get on to chemiosmosis, which is the next stage and the very last stage involved in oxidative phosphorylation. We've also got further dehydrogenation occurring to my five carbon compound here because another coenzyme called FAD is going to be reduced by taking a hydrogen electron from my five carbon compound to produce reduced FAD. I also have another molecule of NAD reduced by gaining a hydrogen and electron from a five carbon compound again. So again, further dehydrogenation occurring there to my five carbon compound to form my oxaloacetate. And then the cycle starts again. So don't forget this cycle occurs twice per one molecule of glucose. You must be using these terms of decarboxylation, dehydrogenation and substrate level phosphorylation whenever you are describing or explaining really what is going on here in the Krebs cycle. So again, as uh, per all the stages in respiration, you need to be aware of what is produced at each stage per one molecule of glucose. Now, because my Krebs cycle is happening twice per one molecule of glucose, this means I'm going to get four lots of carbon dioxide, six lots of reduced NAD, two lots of reduced FAD, and two lots of ATP made through substrate level phosphorylation. So that is the main bulk of what is going on there within the Krebs cycle. Yes, it is a little bit boring and tedious, unfortunately, but it, again, it's just one of those things you've just got to learn. So write it out, cover it up, check if you've got it correct. Make sure you've got those key terms and that key terminology involved. Make your own cycle, stick it on your bathroom wall so that it's there whenever you go to the toilet. Just make sure that you are learning all the different stages and the key terminology involved there. And guys, as ever, please make sure you are not using the terms it, they and amount or size. Use good scientific biological terminology that will get you all of the marking points and good luck.